we see a Regents Review folder. All right, can you just open that up real quick for me and you'll see a bunch of stuff on there right now. Okay, these two where you see the little chains, those are links to websites. Uh, this first link is to two extra online Regents tests that I'm not gonna pass out to you. All right, it's literally online that you can just go through. You don't, don't click on it, I'll just do it. You go to and then you got two practice tests. You can literally sit there with your notebook write down your work, click on what you think is your answer, and then at the end, you can check all your answers and see how you did, okay? And the same thing can be said for, there's a part two and a part three and four as well on there, okay? So there's two extra tests for you. Uh, the one down here, I found this yesterday, it seems pretty good. You guys have JMAP where you go and check your answers and the guy writes down his work. This might even be better for some of you because not only is the work shown, there are also, I, probably not going to pop up on mine, but there's also videos of explanations too. Okay. So if the work's not cutting it for you, I still have no idea. There you go. There's a guy that pops up. So if you're doing, let's say like our exam we're on right now, June, 2017, video solutions, video solutions, video solutions right there for you. Okay. Guy's a little corny, but it gets the job done. All right. He pops up and shows you how to do the problem, explains to you some concepts. All right, and that's for any Regents exam I've handed out to you. You just got to find the correct month and year. All right, so those are two extra links. And then uh, the Regents review times are on there. You guys know where I've already talked about that. Checklist, which is what you got as you came in. All right, I don't know how you guys are keeping the Regents exam organized. I'm not going to tell you how to keep them organized. That's your call. All right, but this sheet you got should go right on top of however you're organizing, whether it be on a binder or in a folder this sheet should go right on top, this checklist, okay? Night before, Monday night, coming up next Monday night, you go through and okay, do I have my blue or black pens? Do I have my pencils, my erasers, straight edge, graphing calculator, and so on, all right? Later on this week, I will give you your seat number where you are, but we are in Jim B, 1230 to 3.30, next Tuesday, a week from today, okay? So there's no excuses or anything like that of I didn't know where to go, I don't know where to sit, what to bring, everyone sees what to bring right now, okay? If you lose it, that's why it's up on Aspen right now as an extra copy up there if you lose it. All good? So we can get rolling with review. Okay, there you go. You can shut down the Chromebooks. We don't need them anymore. You will need a calculator though out. And it, some of you are going to start getting annoyed if you're not already, but I'm saying it every day. You're borrowing a calculator from me. You come into a review session. Pretty easy deal. Okay, pretty easy deal. I'm not bringing any extra calculators with me. All right, here we go with the homework. Let's start flying through this because it seems like I'm spending way too much time on the homework and not actual in class examples that we need to go over here. So let's start flying through the homework here. Uh, go ahead, Caitlin, start us off. 35, everyone go to 35. Okay, 35, make sure everyone's got your calculator out because you're gonna need it right now, no matter how you did this. Solve the equation g of x, all right? Let me stop right there. Tell me what the g of x function is in this problem. g of x function. Start it off. 18, start us off. What's the g of x function? Here today? Do I have an 18? Number 35, what's the g of x function? Okay, so I'm going to plug that in, 2x squared plus 3x plus 10. Tell me when it's equal to 2 times k of x. Give me the k of x function. Here you go, 18 again, k of x. 2x plus 16. Let's take a look at the directions. Algebraically, remember what I showed you last week? What's that mean? I cannot do. Calculator, guess and check, can't do it. Okay, I'm, I'm going to have to factor, complete the square quadratic formula. All right, next thing you want to do up here. Let's get it going. 25, what's the next thing you would do up here? 
Simplify how? Perfect. Thanks, 100. X, 2X squared plus 3X. You want to do that for me, stud? There you go. What's the exponent you see up here? You see a squared. We talked yesterday. Probably going to have to. Factor. Quadratic formula. Complete the square. Can't do that unless one side is what? Okay, let's do it. Help me. Help me. Get it equal to zero. 14. Get it equal to zero. Okay, what do you get on this side when you subtract 4x? Okay, and? Got it. What do you get on this side? Okay. Okay, that's where we are. Some of you may want to try to factor this. Go back to the directions for me. The directions help you out tremendously if you just read carefully. Solve for x to the nearest tenth. Have we ever factored in here? Like with our, I'm talking two parentheses and got decimals? No, 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 we've never have. That should tell you because they're asking you to the nearest tenth, there's, you can spend all day on this. You're never going to be able to factor it. So what are my other choices other than trying to factor this beast? All right, I have actually two other choices I could pull out of my bag. Three, what are my two other choices other than factoring to solve anything with an exponent of two? Quadratic formula, anybody remember the other one? Complete the square. Why am I going to avoid complete the square? There's an A value that's not one, and what do you notice about the B value? It's Well, it's negative and it's odd. I hate odd numbers in complete the square. So it is down to quadratic formula. This is why I've asked all of you to get your calculators out. Everyone realizes you'll be provided with a formula sheet at the end of your Regents exam. What's on that formula sheet? Quadratic formula. No need to memorize it. Negative B plus or minus square root B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. It's right on the quadratic formula. Need some help. I need somebody to identify what the A, B, and C value are. And they should just be numbers, no variables when I say what's the A, B, and C. One, here you go, Jack. What's the A value up here? Two, good man. How about the B value? Good man. Finish it now. C value. Negative 22. I know it's been a while since we've used the quadratic formula. That's why all of you have your calculators out. Watch what we're about to do here. X equals. Jack, again, when I plug in for negative B, you said the B value is negative 1. So what's going to go here? Positive 1 plus or minus. Hey, hey, I don't know if you guys remember this or not. I am not going to plug in anything here. We are going to go right to the calculator right now and do what with these three values? Store them in. Everyone go. Store them in right now. Store in 2 for A, negative 1 for B, and negative 22 for C. Let's go. I'll wait till everybody does it. Take your darn calculator and start storing them in because I don't want to hear excuses next week. 2 stored in for A, negative 1 stored in for B, negative 22 stored in for C. Even if you don't know what to do from here, fine. Just hold on. Just store the darn things in. All stored in. Now what you need to find is, what is this value right here? So in your calculator, no square root, just do b squared minus 4ac. b squared minus 4ac in your calculator. Don't worry about the denominator, nothing else. The only thing you're using your calculator for right now is to store these three values and plugging it into b squared minus 4ac. And what number is your calculator, when you're ready, telling you comes out of that one? 11? We got an 11? I don't want the square root part. I just want the darn number underneath the radical. No, no, it will not. Those three numbers will be stored in there until you store something else in for A, B, and C. 
You can shut off your calculator. You can toss it up in the air. Those three values will always be in there. Uh, somebody's calculator's charging back there, but 240. All right, we need help on storing now. You ready? Go back to the beginning, and everyone, if you had trouble storing, go back to the beginning. Ready? What number? What's your A value? Two. Store that in for A. That's what should be on my calculator. What's your B value? Negative one. Store for that in for B and my C value negative 22 store that in for C we good okay what are we trying to find the value of B squared minus 4 a C what number comes out All right, now we're starting to play a game now. 177 over what should be my denominator if it's 2 times the A value. Here you go. 8, what's my denominator? 4, 2 times 2, 4. Everyone ready now to finish this problem off? How many answers should I get out here? 2, ready? Here's the first one. 1 plus the square root of 177 divided by 4 and 1 minus the square root is 177 divided by 4. If you have the ability in your calculator, here you go, watch one of these. Ever seen one of these bad boys before? That's probably not that one. There we go. How about one of these bad boys? I can watch. I can put it all in there. Ready? 1 plus the square root of 177, all divided by 4. And then I'll do one minus in a second. Once that gets deleted, there we go. Rounding to the nearest tenth, one answer is going to be 3.6. I won't give away the other one. I'll let you do it if you haven't done it already. 3.6. And over here. I'll let somebody else do that work. 24, 1 minus radical 177 over 4. 3.1, got it. Nice job. So we all right there, Caitlin, so far? All right. And now there is a little secondary part which says explain why you chose the method of quadratic equation. Why, do we ha why were we forced to use quadratic equation? It's direction set nearest tenth, and I couldn't do what to it? Factor it. Okay, I couldn't factor it. So I was forced to use the quadratic equation. Yep. Yeah, I know that's what he set up on, or quadratic formula works for any equation. Yeah, that's fine. Matt? 31. Okay. Something very similar to what we just did. When our f of x and g of x equal, so when our x squared minus oh, equal to x. Now, does it say solve algebraically? Okay, so we could have went a couple different ways here. All right, one way, and I'm going to do this using factoring in a second. One way is I could have plugged both into my calculator. Take a look, x squared and x. And where would have the solutions been here? where they intersected, right? So I could have went to my good old second trace, intersect, uh, left it right on where they match up. So one, two, three, zero, zero. Go through the same thing again because there's gonna be two points, right? As according to there, there's one right here and there's probably one right up here somewhere. So go to second trace again, uh, intersect, 
and then move your cursor right up to where you think the other point of intersection is, and then hit enter, well, settle down, hit enter three times again, one, one, and but you have to explain, if you're gonna do that, you have to say, I went to my graphing calculator, typed in both equations into Y1, Y2, second trace, intersect. You gotta go through, hey, every, you gotta go through all the steps you pressed on your calculator if you're gonna do it this way. Yes, Emma. Could I ask you for this question? So you said the x could be No, it said what's the solutions, correct? Oh, okay. Determine the value. Oh, the values of x, then yeah, you can just say one and zero. Okay. Yep. Mm-hmm. Okay, what do you mean by plug it into your calculator? Yep. That's fine. Yep, that's appropriate too. So in this, in that case, Tom, uh, let me just get my table back to something decent. Start at zero. So here you go, right here. You notice in Y1, I would write, you know, at least up to five or six. Write those values on your table. Say, all right, here you go. Zero and one because their Y values are the same. Okay, now going back, what if I wanted to do this algebraically? Because what's the highest exponent up here? Two. Get one side equal to? Okay, everyone ready? X squared, how do I move the X over? Minus X. Look to factor now. I know it's been forever since we did this, but what is the very first thing that should pop into your mind when you're looking to factor something? GCF, and what is it? Okay, everyone take out an X. What's left inside? X minus one is equal to zero, so you do have two answers. X equals zero and X equals one, and just like Emma just said to us, hey, you only had to solve for X. I don't need to plug it in and find the Y value. So that, that's how you do it algebraically. Just three different ways. Use your table, use your graph, do it algebraically. Three different ways we can conquer number 31. Anything else we wanna cover here? I'm gonna do a quick sweep around. Uh, you don't have to show me the multiple choice one, but just flip through, what'd you guys, 30 through 33, right? 30 through 33, and I already did 35, so I don't need to see that one. So just, just flip through 30 through 30. Okay, just flip through, just make it easy. Flip through 30, 31, 32, 33 for me. Okay, that's all I need to see right now. And then we will get going on today's problems. So 30 through 33, just flip through those for me. We have talked extensively about increasing. When I have something like one point, I don't know, one three in there, and I ask you for what the rate was, I think we're pretty good there, okay? If it's 1.13, what's the rate? 13%, done, okay, 13%. We have not talked as much about if it's decreasing or decaying, right? Because a lot of you I know would look at this right now and say 85%, there's my two points, but you'd be completely wrong, okay? You would be completely wrong, all right? When it's decreasing, all right, when it's decreasing, this number in here, is represented by one minus whatever the rate was. That's what I'm looking for right there was what must have been the rate, okay? So do not, when it decreases, do not just take whatever decimal's in there and say, oh, there's the percent. No, no, no. That decimal represents one minus whatever the rate I was looking for. So you tell me, I'm gonna call on somebody right now, what must have been one minus what would have gave me that 0.85? That's what I need to know. And that's my rate, okay? Not the number that's plugged in there when it's decreasing. So what must have been my rate if I have a 0.85 in there? Eight. What is it? 0.15, correct. 0.15, which gives me a rate of 15%. Okay, 15% on that one. So when it's decreasing, it's one minus whatever's in there. Okay, one minus whatever's in there. Gavin, go. Okay, I, there's more up there. Okay. Are we all good there? So we okay on if it's increasing, like I just showed at the beginning with the 1.13, and then if it's decreasing. We're all good there because I have a feeling one of them is going to come up. 
And by the way, I have no idea what questions are on this exam Tuesday. I see it about five minutes before you guys do. So please don't think I have advanced knowledge of, is this question going to be on there? Is this topic? I have no idea. Okay, no idea. Anything else? All right, let's move. I only have a couple today because I want to get going. I want to see what you can do on your own with a couple. Uh, 17. Woohoo! We got our work cut out on this one. All right, two functions. I got the g of x, which is the table, and I got f of x, which is this equation they gave me. Time out. Everybody stop. I talked about this yesterday. Anybody know what form that equation's in? Vertex form. Nice job, everybody. This is in vertex form for you already. Which statement is true down below? All right, so let's go through each one. Do each of them have the same vertex? Well, let's find the vertex for both of them. Using this equation, can you pick out the vertex? Using the equation, can you pick out the vertex for f of x? Let's find out. One week away. Here you go, 23. Can you pick out the vertex? 3, 2. Nice job. 3, 2. Can you pick out the vertex of the table? You should be able to. Where is the vertex located on the table here? You should be able to find out where it is. You got it. You can do it. 26, where's the vertex up here? Nice. 3, negative 5. There it is. So true or false, they have the same vertex. No chance. They have the same zeros, meaning what? What are the zeros again? Where the graph does what? Okay, hey guys, do me a favor. Plug that sucker into Y1 and you tell me what's the problem. Plug that graph into Y1 and you tell me what the problem with this whole zeros choice is. You don't even have to do it for the table. Just do it for uh, the one in vertex form. And you tell me what the zeros are. What's the problem with people's graph? Does it intersect the x-axis, so does it have any zeros? No. no, so they can't have the same zeros if this equation doesn't even have any. Ah, done. All right, next. They have oh, axis of symmetry. And I know most of negative b over 2a, right? That's what you start thinking. Hey, do you guys know the vertex of both? OK, and, and this might be a long shot, but I'll hear from anybody. I won't call on anybody here, but I'll hear from you if you want to answer. Do you remember where the axis of symmetry is located in the vertex? It's that vertical line. Yep. But it's contained in there. It's contained in the vertex. It's the x value. When you know the vertex, the axis of symmetry is the x value of the vertex. All right? So axis of symmetry, yes, negative b over 2a. I want you to remember that. But it's also the x value in the vertex. So you tell me, is that a true statement? Do they have the same axis of symmetry? What is it? X equals 3. There you go. Okay, the X value is the axis of symmetry in the vertex. The Y value you get by plugging it back in. Emma, let's roll. Um, if you wanted to like find out if number 4 is 50, like say you didn't know that and you tried number 4, how would you set up like your... You'd have to take a scrap sheet of graph paper. Y1, right? Put in your Y1, go to your table, all right? Match up, the, see if these point, any of these points match up with that one. So there's no way to make There is, all right? It, it's a little, a lot of work, but you got, you remember doing your list from your stat unit, okay? You remember what type of equation this is? If it's the highest exponent is two, I know it's a parabola, but quadratic. So you could go put the, put it in list one, list two, and then you remember where you could go for stat, calculate where I would go here. 
quadratic regression, that would give you the uh, equation for that parabola, okay, because it's a quadratic, so you could do it that way if you wanted to, all right. We all good here? Vertex, axis of symmetry is the x-coordinate. Perfect. Let's move. Whew, what's up next? Always a big surprise when I forget to put it. Oh, is it rational or irrational? Another common question, it seems, every year. Well, we might as just well find out, right? 7 minus radical 2. Let's see what that bad boy equals. And then we'll talk rational or irrational. 7 minus the square root of 2. Woo, how about that number right there? What do we think? Rational or irrational? Matt? Okay, we'll get there. You need a little bit more detail than that, but you are correct in irrational. He is correct. Sam? Irrational because the matter subtract irrational and irrational and they equal You could do that. When you subtract or add an irrational number to a rational, the answer is always irrational. Yes, Emma? Okay, no pattern. I like that a lot. Cannot be turned into a fraction. There's a lot of different responses here. Everyone right now, do me a favor in your calculator. I'm just going to go with what Olivia just said, which was what again? Can't turn it into a fraction. Everyone have their math button here? Can you just hit your math button and you see choice one, turn it back into a fraction for me? All right, I've gone over that a couple times this semester. And what's your calculator telling you here? Can't do it. I can't turn it back into a fraction. All right, I can't turn it back into a fraction. So again, here we can say it's irrational. And what you guys told me was fine. Sam, what you told me, Emma, what you told me was fine. Irrational because it cannot be turned back into a fraction. And I'm going to add something that I know that they're going to look for when they grade it. Because I don't know if that's going to be good enough. Can cannot be turned back into a fraction with integer values. And what I mean by that, guys, is it can't be turned back into a fraction with a number over a number. Okay, a number over a number. So I think you have to have that part in there that it can't be turned into a fraction with integer values. All right, but again, Sam, you want to write down what you told me? Fine, Emma, same thing. All right, go ahead, Caitlin. The, here's what it means. Here you go, ready? 0.33333. That's rational. Why? You know what the fraction I can rewrite that as? And what do you know about one and three? Those are num actual integer numbers, okay? Like, I can write it as 2 over 3, okay. negative 4 over 6. I can't do that with this number. This number, though, I could. Okay? Good? And that's what I mean by the number, their actual numbers here on top and on the bottom. Okay? Good? All right, move. I don't know, one or two more maybe here. Yep, this is the last one, 36. I'll let you read through it real quick about Michael and his savings account. First part's going to be the toughest for us. We, we have to write our own equation for both options. Okay, we have two options. All right, we got option one 
and option number two. I've got two options. Okay, what's happening in option one? Caitlin, what's happening in option one? Each week, 100 bucks. But he's, remember, he starts out with what, though? 10. So we got to figure that into the, both equations, too. That he starts out with $10 and $100 each week. Write a function in terms of X, where it looks like X will be our weeks here. Anybody want to take that one over? Because I think this is the easier of the two. It's not much easier, but it's the easier of the two. Starts with $10, $100 a week. What do you got, Fiona? Nice job. $10 he starts out with. $10 plus 100 each week. Yep. Nice job. So there's the first one. Ooh, option two. Doubles every week now. Doubles every week. Uh, so we started out with 10, right? So next week's going to go to what? Week one will be 20. Week two? And so on. Yep, yep. We get yep, down, down, down. So when you write this equation, I should be able to get 10, 20, 40, 80, 160 from it. What's up? Write it as f of x equals, or you could, like it's on this one right here, equals f of x. Go ahead. I'm listening. I don't know how to ask her. Like what I which which topic does this fall under? How are you asking? I don't even know what topic it would fall under. Because it's actually two different topics because you got yeah. like a linear, this would be a line here, and then this is going to be a totally different one here. All right, so I'm doubling every time here. Doubling every time, but you got to remember you start out with 10 bucks. Doubling it every time. And it's not going to be 2x. Okay? 2x. It's not going to be 2x. Because take a look. Ready? Does this go up by the same amount every time? No. So it's not going to be linear like we had over there. Okay? Anybody know what type this is going to be? It's not linear because it doesn't go by the same amount every time. It doubles itself. Exponential. Yep. It's going to be exponential. All right, this will be exponential. So it'll be 2 to the x, because anytime it's exponential, you got your variable up here. And what am I forgetting? Should I add 10? Well, ready? here you go. Ready? Let's, let's just test it. Don't write anything down. So you guys are saying add 10 to it. Ready? Week 1. She's going to have 20 bucks in there, right? Because that's what she started out with, so I don't count that as a week. Week one, she'll have 20 bucks. Everyone plug in one right now. Two, what, are you, what, are you, what are you doing? Two to the first. Two plus 10. She doesn't have 20 bucks. She's got 12, so I can't add 10. What should I be doing instead? Multiplying 10, yes. We are grabbing your calculators for two to the first. Okay, so 10 times 2 to the x. You guys answer part the last part on your own now. He wants to have $700 in the account by the end of seven weeks. Determine which option or options make him reach his goal. You know both equations now. You're looking for seven weeks. Which one or ones will let him achieve his goal?
Option one, how much money does would he have at the end of seven weeks? Number two, option one, how much money? Option one, option one, sorry. 710, so option one works. How much money is Mike going to have at the end of option two for seven weeks? Number four? So what can we say? Both options here. So justify your answer. Both options will reach his goal. Why? Just a quick why. Because both are over 700. You don't need anything fancy when it says justify. Because both are over 700. Okay. I think even if you wrote both, both options will work, that's fine. Because it doesn't say explain, so you don't really need this end part. If you just put your work in here, I plugged in seven here. Show me that you plugged in seven and then say both will reach his goal. Fine. That's fine. Okay, start the homework. Let's go. I'll walk around seeing what you're doing. Let's start the homework. <laughs>